Every system needs a home. We've got the uh, 460X here from Corsair. And uh, with this system, it's gonna be a gaming rig and it's gonna be my own personal rig. And uh, you know what? Guys, I like color. And you think RGB. I can hear everybody in the comments. There's a few of you guys. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. Guess what? Don't build your computer with RGB. I'm gonna build mine with RGB. So this thing's gonna be loaded up with RGB fans in the front. We've got RGB other stuff you'll see in a second. And then I also like the fact that we have, um, a, you know, a nice tempered glass side panel right here. The one thing that I'm not sure about is I don't know how I feel about the honeycomb design in the front. It might be like one step too far for my minimalism, but um, we're gonna power it up and see how it looks. Otherwise, a uh, lot of room to work with inside here. Plus, uh, for the amount of things you can do with this, it's a mid-tower case, so it's not massive, and I like that too. An old faithful right here, the Zotec GTX 1080. This is the Mini, and I'm using the Mini because out of all the 1080s we tested, the Mini was the fastest. So I'll be using that one until there's a new upgrade on the market. For the CPU, we went with the 8700K, and uh, that is gonna be overkill for a gaming computer, but it's also gonna be about the fastest CPU out there for a gaming computer. And the reason we went with the six core is because I wanted to be able to also do some productivity if need be. I don't wanna to have to run across the room to a different computer if I need to do a quick thing in, in Premiere or something like that, or I need to do a little touch up on my music or something. Having the extra cores is gonna be nice, and this thing has a frequency advantage on most other parts out there on the market. Now, it's not gonna be the, the best budget part for gaming, but overall, this thing scores way up at the top when it comes to gaming. It's really made for more for gaming, not for workstations, but it, it can get the job done with the extra cores. All right, for the memory, uh, just the Vengeance RGB. This is 3200 megahertz memory that we can overclock ourselves if we like. This is some really fast memory. It's got the nice shroud and also it's RGB, so we can sync it up with everything else that's RGB under the case and just have a ridiculous amount of lights. Now, truth be told, um, this is some really fast memory. I may end up using this in an AMD build in the future if we have any more AMD parts come in just because they like the faster memory. But I have some of this. Uh, this is just, you know, 2400 megahertz memory. Uh, and it's also, you know, Vengeance Corsair, but it doesn't have the LEDs. But 32 gigs, so I'll, I'll split it with my other system. That's, that's something I might do. But for now, we're putting in the RGB. All right, so for M.2, you gotta have an M.2 with a system like this. This is the MP500, 240 gigabytes. And I'm using this one for the OS. Uh, it's not a huge drive but it's really freaking fast. So our boot times are gonna be like instantaneous. So what is it right here? It's a yeah, 3000 megabytes a second on the read. What? Yeah, that's, that's absurd. The write is as fast as the read is on my current M.2. 24 megabytes a second write and then 250,000 IOPS. Jesus. So that's gonna be the OS. And then the OCZ is also really fast here from Toshiba. Uh, this is the OCZ RD400. And I'm going with this one for Speed storage, if you know what I mean. Skyrim with all those mods, it really likes being installed on this. When you, you know, if you guys have ever played with a thousand mods and you're loading it off a regular hard drive, it's really slow. So it really does help for some games like that. Once you get into the game, the experience is largely the same, but this is gonna cut down on load times a lot for a lot of key games. Uh, and then above and beyond that, if I'm doing like some photo editing or something like that, uh, I'll wanna move all my stuff right here and edit it from this drive. So this is gonna be nice to have. Uh, next up, I'm actually uh, gonna throw Linux on here, but I wanna do that on a separate drive. And uh, Linux is not as much of a resource hog as Windows, but I wanna be able to play around with it a little bit, uh, especially since we're gonna be making our game. Our game is gonna be working. Uh, we're gonna have it working on Linux just fine, and I wanna test it. So we've got the OCZ, it's 240 uh, gigabyte, just a standard OCZ solid state drive. And uh, this one is not like as blazing fast as these because it's a standard SATA drive, but it's also um, gonna be way faster than a regular mechanical disk. And this is about the size I want, 240 gigabytes for my Linux installation. So that'll go on there. And when I install this, I'm actually going to uh, unhook all the other drives physically so that there's no weirdness. And then whenever I wanna load this up, uh, I press F10 and just select this drive as my uh, drive to boot from. Hey, how about some NAS drives? Now, these are good for a NAS, so of course they're gonna be good for a regular computer. They're made for, you know, like environments that are just constantly using and using and using. I've owned, I don't know, I'd say almost 30 of these and had maybe one or two go bad after lots and lots of abuse. One go bad? I had that one show up dead on arrival. Yeah, one showed up dead on arrival, but other than that, I actually haven't had any of these go bad on myself. One dead on arrival, but in, all of my NAS. So I'll be using a couple of these in the system uh, just for extra storage. And then the NAS is what I use for real storage. All right, next up, we need to keep that CPU cool. And we also need to be able to overclock, and we also need our RGB, so right here's the Corsair. This is the H115i Pro. It'll do all those things, uh, 280 millimeters. And you know, with this system, I've really 
come around and started using some parts that I've used before because I know they work. And I've used this on my sh machine for, I don't know, three or four years now, the HX1000. This is the second one of these that I've purchased. It's worked so well that I'm getting another one. And this uses, you know, like all the, all the best capacitors and really nice parts on the inside. Uh, the efficiency curve is, well, it's really good at uh, 50 to 80 percent and pretty good. It's, I mean, it's up close to, up close to 90 at, at where I'm going to be using this. So, and for the motherboard, we've got the uh, Z370. It was at the Gaming Pro Carbon AC from MSI. And this is also something that I've used before. This is going to be the second one of these that I've used. And I've decided to use this one uh, because it has a ridiculous amount of bells and whistles for a good price. And it's got the RGB, of course, and all that stuff on there. But the main thing is, is it was very easy to overclock with. And it was really stable. And you know, my boot times and stuff were super fast. So I'll show you guys this thing once I get it built. We'll probably do a sec second video once everything's put together to show you how everything's running. All right, last but not least, I'm just going to throw this in there. This was sitting around capture card. Why not? I have a media capture card. It's good to have HDMI capture in case we're doing something that needs capture. I don't know. I don't know if we'll be streaming much, but who knows? I bought this on eBay. There was no bracket. We had to make a bracket. All right, let's build this thing. So it's finished and it is beautiful. I think I'm gonna keep the LED vengeance memory in there because it looks so damn good. It's vain, I don't care. You deal with it. Um, this was not an easy build at all. I was pulling my hair out for a couple of days. Don't, don't do this guys. Do not build the exact same thing. I mean, you can and once you're finished, it's gonna be great and you'll just leave it alone. But you might wanna get a slightly bigger case if you're gonna to try to put this much stuff in front. So I've got the LL120 fans all up and down the front and all on the inside. We've got six of them in total and I'm using a lighting node pro and that's something that comes with Corsair Link. So you have to have Corsair Link going in order to get the colors like this because I'm not using the controls on the front panel uh, to control the LEDs at all in this machine. So there's that, which means in Linux, I'm gonna to have to get Corsair Link working. Corsair, please make a version for Linux. I'm gonna make it work, and I'll, after I get it up and running with the newest version, I'll uh, show you guys how I did it. Uh, but right now, whenever I go into Linux, it just turns into rainbow color mode. Uh, and I, guys, I haven't had a, a machine with an aesthetic like this ever. I've never really jumped into the RGB boat, but it looks really pretty. And I like the LL fans because they also have the ring on the outside. Uh, it's above and beyond what you get when you just, uh, you know, use the fans that it came with, which are already pretty. Um, now, this radiator did not fit pretty much anywhere because top to bottom there, there's not a lot of room. The uh, 460X is not as big as the 570X. I should have gone with that, but I wanted something small. So in order to get all the cables in there, we had to wedge things in there. Ultimately, I couldn't fit it on top because the motherboard back there um, is all the way up to the top and the, the shroud or the armor, I guess they call it, uh, that's on the MSI uh, Z370 motherboard is a little bit too close to the radiator. It might have caused some issues. It was actually bumping around and stuff, so it didn't work. Couldn't, couldn't get it in there all the way. I put it all the way in the front. We've got a 280 millimeter radiator, and on the other side of that, those are 120 fans. So we had to get really creative when we attached that thing, and don't worry, it's attached, it's safe, but don't try this at home. Also on the bottom here, the shroud that covers the power supply and the hard drives is not fully attached and locked in place. It's kind of wedged in place, and uh, that's because the radiator extends to, uh, so far down that it, you can't fully 
put it where you want it. But when you put the side panel on there, nobody will notice, zero people will notice. It kind of feels like one of my PCs. All my PCs have something weird going on. Like there's always like, how did you get all that in that case? Why did you do this? So it's, it's I do case modding without modding the case by just cramming it in there with a hammer. So that's sort of my trademark, I guess. It's not the prettiest thing. Cable management on the backside, no, it's not really happening. Uh, the reason being is I've, I've got it all tucked away as neatly as it can be, and then we put the side panel on there because I change components here and there, and I don't wanna have to go and clip 90,000 cable ties every time I change components. Um, in fact, I don't usually do cable management on the backside, only on the interior. And people who do that and make it look all sexy, it's great, you're gonna get a thousand upvotes on Instagram or whatever. And then if you ever wanna change a component, you're gonna shoot yourself in the head. So that's why I don't do a lot of cable, man cable management on the backside, I just tuck them away and slap the back paddle on and run before it pops. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my rig. It's way prettier than I thought it was gonna be. We'll do some more builds coming up. And uh, I'm also gonna you know, show you guys what I'm installing on this. When I get back from Computex, you'll see like all the details on what I'm gonna be using. Uh, we'll try to do some Linux stuff as well uh, and just get back into more of, the, more of that sort of stuff. So grab a t-shirt and uh, guys support the creators that you love. Uh, we've got my keyboards over in the store, went to China and try to find the best thing we could. So please check those out. And uh, if you like them, grab them. Mouse pads, shirts, whatever. If you guys have ideas for shirts, do post those over on our forum. Remember, we have bounties for that stuff. So if we use one of your ideas, we always pay you. So check that out, and we'll see you guys on the forum. By the way, it's forum.techsyndicate.com now. It's back. It's fixed. It's ready to go. See you later.